Good morning, my name is Wojtek Wojcicki. I'm the president and CEO of NGX Resources. Welcome to the AGM for the company. So it's been a tough couple of years for junior exploration stocks, but it really looks like the copper price bottomed in January of 2016, and we're confident that the combination of underinvestment during the down cycle, which really began in 2012, and a robust long-term demand picture is gonna to lead to significantly higher copper prices in the medium term. NGX used the down cycle to advance and de-risk our projects, and we're going to be one of the few large-scale copper projects that's ready to be developed for the next cycle, which we feel is starting right now. There's huge long-term value in the kind of large-scale advanced project that we've been able to put together over the last couple of years. It's been a long haul, but we're starting to see more M&A activity and interest in our projects as the majors finish cleaning up their balance sheets and start to think about growth. In the meantime, we're going to continue to look for opportunities to create value as we did with the successful spin out of Fila Mining last year. And then we're also going to be looking to add new high quality projects to our pipeline. So for the last year, our focus has been on low cost options to add value and to make sure that our projects are ready to go for the next cycle. And what this really means is removing as many obstacles to advancing the projects as possible. So a good example of this is last year, we closed the deal to acquire the surface rights required to develop Los Alados. And this was a huge achievement that removes one of the main roadblocks that typically delays large scale projects like this. We also continued the baseline environmental studies. These are important because they provide the long-term data that's used uh, or that's required for your permit applications. We continue to look for opportunities to tweak and optimize our engineering studies and a good example of this is the, te the leach test work that we did on the oxide gold zone on Jose Maria last year. We're expecting to ramp up the effort this year, and this is desktop work that's low cost and uses data that we've already generated. And we're going to focus on simpler, lower cost development options that will focus on Jose Maria. And we'll look at that a little bit later in the presentation. We also worked up some of the earlier stage exploration targets that we have between Jose Maria and Los Alados and that we think have potential to add mine life and add resources to an eventual operation here. We also significantly ramped up our engagement with our partners, and this is primarily to explore synergies with the nearby Casarones deposit and infrastructure, and that we've also increased our efforts to market the projects to third parties. And finally, we successfully created over $125 million worth of value for our shareholders through the spin out of Fila Mining. And I think it's the success of the spin-out that highlights the value of our portfolio. And you can count on us to, look, to continue to look for ways to unlock more value. Philo was spun out to NGX shareholders who received one Philo share for every four NGX shares that they held. NGX has maintained its value over the last year or so, and Philo now trades at a market cap of around $125 million. Philo is focused on advancing the Philo del Sol project towards production and NGX is focused on putting together a transaction for our advanced projects and then building and incubating a new project pipeline. So before I move on to talk about the projects, I want to touch on the copper market and the copper price and our outlook. This is important because junior companies like ours, development projects tend to trade in line with the copper price. We really feel like we bottomed out in December, or Jan December 2015, January 2016, and we're really bullish about the outlook. We're bullish about the outlook for the copper price because grades at existing mines are declining significantly. And even Escondido, which is the world's biggest and best copper mine, is looking at a significant grade decline in the next couple of years. So Escondido started out mining 2% copper 30 years ago. For the last 10 or 15 years, it's been around 1%. Going forward, it's looking at looking at more like 0.5%. And this increases costs, increases, um, increases the, the, the cost of doing everything. Furthermore, low prices over the last five years have meant that very little exploration and development work has been done. There's been very limited investment. So very few new large deposits have been found and even fewer of those are held by junior companies. So there have been a couple of big discoveries, including some discoveries in the Congo uh, in the last few years, but development timelines mean that projects that are found today 
are unlikely to be in production anytime before 10 or 15 years from now. So the projects that are available to be developed for this cycle are the ones that have been advanced and de-risked like the NGX projects. On the demand side, just average growth is enough to create a shortage of copper. But more importantly, copper also stands to be one of the main beneficiaries of the transition to green energy and green transportation. An electric car uses approximately five times as much copper as a conventional gasoline car. Hybrids use about twice as much copper as conventional uh, gasoline powered cars. Green energy things like windmills and photovoltaic cells also use a lot of copper. So that transition to greater use of electric, electric vehicles and green energy is, is strongly bullish for copper. And our projects are going to be in the sweet spot and at the intersection of all of these trends. So these are large scale, long life assets in a good jurisdiction with good access to existing mining infrastructure. And in the next slide, I want to show you a short video that's a really good summary of our Constellation project. So here we're seeing the location of the projects. We're in South America, right on the border between Chile and Argentina. Los Salados and Jose Maria are about 10 kilometers apart. There's a really big resource base there. So now we're seeing the open pit at Jose Maria and the plant site. Now we're going to take a three-dimensional look at the deposit. The overall resource. The high-grade zone that's a very important part of the economics. Another look at the infrastructure and the plant site. And now we're going to take a look at Los Salados. So again, this is about 10 kilometers from Jose Maria. It's a big deposit with a significant high-grade core that's shown in red here. Now we're seeing some of the infrastructure that would be developed, would be used to develop Los Salados. And this is a good aerial shot of the overall infrastructure, including the conveyor belts that would link the two deposits. And now a look at the regional infrastructure and access. So looking ahead, we're going to continue to look for opportunities to add value uh, by optimizing the engineering studies that we've done. And this includes evaluating options for lower cost scale development of Jose Maria. If we look at the production profile for Project Constellation, a lot of the early copper and gold production comes out of the high grade zone at Jose Maria. And so we're going to look at ways that we could develop that on a smaller scale initially and scale our way into a larger operation. We can do that kind of work using our existing data and it's a low cost way of, of adding value, we think. We're gonna continue the baseline environmental studies and then we're gonna start the process for acquiring water rights in Argentina. And as I said earlier, we're gonna ramp up our efforts to engage with potential development partners, including our current Japanese partners. We're gonna work hard on these initiatives in the, and they'll continue in the background. In the meantime, we're going to rebuild our exploration pipeline. And we have one of the best and most experienced exploration teams in South America. When we look at the career discovery record of our management team members, it's pretty impressive. Between us, we've discovered over 16 million tons of copper, 45 million ounces of gold, and 330 million ounces of silver. And that's all of us working together in different companies on different projects. But it's an impressive uh, track record. And if you compare it to what a mid-tier, successful mid-tier mining company like Lindy Mining has, uh, it's significantly more, what we're responsible for discovering is significantly more than the overall resource base of a, of a, of a significant company. 
So it's a good team and we really want to use them to bring in the next generation of, of projects. We're seeing some great opportunities, particularly in Argentina, and as these projects develop and mature, I'm confident that we can repeat the success that we've had with the spin-out of Fila del Sol. NGX is really a unique combination of a strong team with a lot of experience in South America and a proven track record of generating good projects. We've got the financial backing of the Lundin Group, which enables us to follow through on our ideas. There's lots of people that have good ideas, not everybody has the money to carry them out. We really feel that the market is turning and the spotlight is going to return to junior explorers and NGX will be a beneficiary of that process. We're going to be working as hard as we can on a transaction for the advanced projects and then also working to bring the next generation of projects uh, into the company so that we can do it again. We've got a lot going on and it's going to be an exciting year. Look forward to updating you on our new projects at the next AGM.